I've never seen a diamond in the flesh. I cut my teeth on wedding rings in the movies, and I'm not proud of my dress. In the torn up town, no postcode. I mean, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, or you could call it straight out of Norwich. I mean, yeah. either way. Um, but the director, Stephen Merchant, is with us. We have a giant cast, many of whom you know. And if you don't, they're about to introduce themselves. But Stephen, give us a sense about what this film is about and who's in it and what they do. Well, firstly, thank you for having me here and with the gang. Uh, this is weird. I didn't expect this. It's kind of like either a boy band that's just arrived in Tokyo <laughs> or 
Or like Gone Girl, where we're about to explain that a missing loved one is uh, <laughs> and the press have gathered. Um, I've never known those two things to be put together like that. I, I no, always exactly. think of those two things the same. Uh, so, sorry, you wanted me to do what? Introduce well, the let, cast? Well, let, let's talk. Let, yes. so I'll, I'll give people a quick sense. This is a, this is a rags to immensely huge superstardom story That's right. that came out of one of those things you just don't believe happens, which is how many of you know the Lana Turner story? Okay, well, not so much. Um, <laughs> But basically, there's a famous story. I don't even know if it's true or not. But that Lana Turner was sitting at the at the counter at a drugstore getting a milkshake or something, I think. And some some big Hollywood bigwig saw her and went, "You're a star," and that's how she became a star. That's it. And this story, kind of a bit like that. Um, right. It started on late night TV. If you want to lead us off. It started like it started on late night TV. Uh, my dear friend Dwayne the Rock Johnson, who uh, I did a movie some years ago, you uh, may remember called Tooth Fairy. You're welcome. Yeah, you know it. <laughs> Um, if you're sick, you know, you might catch it on a wet Sunday afternoon on, on TV somewhere. And uh, he was uh, making a film in, in England, one of the Fast and the Furious films, and he couldn't sleep. And The Rock uh, is in this hotel room, and he's watching this documentary that comes on TV, on British TV, about Paige and her family. Late, late night TV. Very late I mean, night like, this TV. documentary was being buried at midnight. Well, you, come yeah. on. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no the documentary rerun. did tremendously well. It won awards and everything, ah. but it was repeated. And, and late night TV in England, they... they yeah. yeah, we only make about four shows a year, you know, so we tend to repeat them a lot. And uh, he caught this documentary and he was intrigued by Paige's real life family. You know, they all wrestle, mum, dad, three kids. And uh, Paige and her brother got the chance to audition for WWE, which obviously for wrestlers is the big leagues. Mm -hmm. And uh, only she got chosen. She went off to Florida, 4,000 miles from home, had to train with the WWE while the, the brother and the family got left behind. And so um, that's the sort of story that we've, we've uh, dramatized. And um, it has a sort of, it just had a kind of ready-made, like rocky underdog totally. story just there waiting to be plucked out and turned into a movie. So, Paige, we want to talk to, you know, Nick and Lena play your parents in the film, Vince plays your trainer, you know, and, and people play you in the film. She does. But, yeah. Exactly. Listen to but but yeah. before we get to that, I wanted to say for you is, what is this ride? I mean, you went on this amazing ride out of Norwich to WWE right. fame, and then now this happens. What's that like for you? It's bonkers, yeah. It's, it's really, it's, it's truly wonderful. And having this cast as well, like, you couldn't pick a better cast. They're absolutely amazing. And she does a great job being me. Like, aesthetically, way more yeah. pleasing to look at. She, like, is so beautiful, and she's just so talented, so... <sighs> Uh, we'll see. Uh, and 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 I, I can say because I have I have seen the film, excellent wrestling moves. Thank excellent you very much. Wrestling. No, I mean honestly, this is the thing in these movies. Like, and, and excellent wrestling moves there too, my queen. Like <laughs> for sure, excellent. No, and and there's, there's th that's the part thing about these movies because this is actually, and I don't know if this has ever happened before, but this is a collaboration between. Well, there's Dwayne and the Garcias uh, company. There's Channel Four and WWE Studios, which. Two things you don't put together very often, right? Right. I don't think Film 4 have collaborated often with WWE. <laughs> I think they may have been loosely involved in Room. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Um, but, uh, yeah, they paired up, and, uh, and it's, yeah, it was an unlikely combination. And it was, you know, it was a low-budget movie, and we did it kind of, you know, a lot of it was kind of guerrilla style, you know, and we were shooting these wrestling matches very fast on the fly. And, um, and so we sort of has all the trappings of that sort of indie movie. We just also happened to have Dwayne Johnson involved, you know, so it's a kind of, it's an unlikely... Combination. So, Vince, how did you get involved in this? And give us a t tell people because they haven't seen it what your role is in the film. Yeah, I got involved. I got a call uh, about the story, and I was not as familiar. I watched the documentary originally, and, and what really struck me was you you see these coming of age stories where someone has a dream, but what was interesting to me was that this was a little girl kind of born into a dream of two parents, and I found it just fascinating. Then you got that shared with your brother, but ultimately, you know, it's like mythology you travel across the ocean to an unknown world but you're not just trying to live out your hopes and dreams but that of a family like it's your opportunity to fulfill the things that your parents want and that was very powerful and so i think whether you're a fan of wrestling which is a i grew up i was, was a fan of wrestling and i think whenever in these movies you enter into worlds that you don't know that are exciting but the the dna of the story i think is just so wide appealing because everyone yeah. can relate to that that journey that's a really good point vince is is that you don't have to be a fan of i mean i'm a massive wrestlemania fan and and have been since i was a teenager but you don't have to be to see this movie because this is a very compelling family drama as well very, Very much so. Very much. Lena and Nick, how did you guys get involved with the film? And, and, and give us a little bit of a sense. I wanted to know, because you play Paige's parents, did you I actually, play one of them. Did, did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Collectively. I probably heard that. Oh, well, I see. Yeah, it. <laughs> Collectively. Though that ring could play everyone. That ring's massive. Thanks. Um, <laughs> give, give a sense of, did you guys reach out to them, talk to them, and, and give a sense about playing those roles? Um, I just, I had a conversation with Stephen, and he said, do you want to come and do it? And I said, yeah, all right. <laughs> he showed me a picture of Ricky, and we'd both been in prison. Mm. And so I, you know, share, shared that with Ricky, and uh, <laughs> I like wrestling, and it was a no-brainer for me. <laughs> Lena? Um, well, I'd seen the documentary years ago and fell in love with the family, and then this came up, and I was like, fuck yeah. I just don't want to make a mess of it, because they're amazing people. Now, what was it like? You, my, I have a favourite scene in the movie, but I guess I can't really talk about it, because no one's seen it yet. But I Give want... us a hint. What? Which one? My, what's my favourite scene? A hint, a hint. Um, so, the four of you are in a van, uh -huh. and there's a cell phone on the dash, and you're trying to get a certain studio uh -huh. to give you, like, any attention. And I just love that scene. And the reason I love the scene is, is, is when Nick is primarily having the conversation on the phone, but the three of you are kind of interjecting like people do in real life. Because you don't actually see that in movies very often. You know, you, do, you see people, they kind of like, well, now to you, and now to you, and it's very informal. And, and, and Jack, you do it too. And, and I want to get a sense of how much of that was improvised and how much of that was, was in the script, because it seems so natural. Well, why don't we just, in, let's not talk about it. Why don't we watch the clip? <laughs> 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 oh, did we? Oh, we're not going to show the clip. It's fine. Uh, a, lot, a lot of it wasn't improvised, right? I think we'd always stay quite close to the the material that Stephen slaved over for uh, say weeks, I think. <laughs> um, and then, you know, I think he's a good enough director, and and to allow us to have a bit of fun, right? Right, gang? Yeah, gang. Well, I'm right? fairly sure at the end of that, you you just improvised the line. You're a dick, or something, and then you started. That's laughing. my go-to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was absolute dynamite. And so, in the finished film, I think Jack, you're, we can see you turning away, trying not to get caught laughing. Yeah. There weren't many takes where you weren't laughing yeah. at some point and ruining it. A lot, a lot of this film, I spent um, with my back to camera uh, because I was trying not to laugh at Nick uh, or someone else. Because um, Nick, some of these guys have such razor sharp wit. Mm -hmm. Vince as well. Like they, they're just like machine guns. It's insane. But yeah, a lot of it is on the back of my head, but you know, <laughs> backting is an underrated <laughs> skill in this <laughs> industry. And, and Florence, for you and, for you and Paige, how much did you guys talk and, 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 and really you tried to get a sense of her and the role and, and what she's achieved? So we, we hadn't met at all by the time we did the film, and we actually only met a couple of weeks ago um, for the first ever time. Really? Yeah. Wow. But um, obviously we were in contact a lot, and I had to do the exact same thing that she had to do in her career. I went out and wrestled in front of crazy fans, so um, I need a lot of her help <laughs> over the phone. Um, but no, we, we hadn't met, but obviously the easy thing about studying a... A WWE superstar is that she's all over the internet, and um, you can't you can't really get away from her character. So that was, a, a, yeah, that was that made it easy um, to study her and, and, and figure out who she was. And we're actually really good friends. So that I know we're best friends. <laughs> now, 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 Paige, for you, I mean, what was that like seeing someone play you and play you all, through all stages of your life? Well, it's bizarre, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's very bizarre. Um, just just as seeing my story back in general, it was a very weird thing to to watch. Like the first time I watched it, like uh, like I said with Stephen, Stephen, Stephen brought it to me at the performance center, which is where uh, the, the developmental system is, which you'll see in the movie, uh, how, how it works. But he, he brought the movie to me and he's like, okay, it's finished. I'm gonna stand outside the room though, because I don't want to be in the same room with you because I feel like I'm gonna keep looking at you throughout the whole movie. So I was like, okay. So uh, I watched the whole thing. I cried my eyes out the whole way through. So I, I wasn't really watching it because I was too busy being overly emotional, but I-, <laughs> why, I why was that? It, what do you mean? It's a movie on my life. Why would I not be crying? I'm crying because it's, it's just so beautifully done. Yeah. And, and everyone just did such a good job. And it just made me miss my family even more, you know, because I don't get to see them very often because I'm over here. They're over in England. So, um, yeah, and they just did such a great job. It was literally like watching my parents on the TV. It's like watching my brother. And then it's like looking in a mirror with this one. <laughs> Although she's way better than me. <laughs> 
and what did, did, you know, um, Florence? There's a lot. Obviously, the, the movie has, as they do, acts and stages. And there's a point when your your character and Vince's character really, you know, you go to basically WWE. A WWE training camp, I guess, yeah. is a way of putting it. Give us a sense. I want to get a sense between the two of you about how you played those out because it's a, it's it's very much a mentoring role that you play, Vince, in this. Well, I mean, the stuff that Florence had to do was just exceptional. Like this is these guys are really athletic. It's mm -hmm. especially modern wrestling. I think is far more complicated than the stuff that used to be like you know, kind of the Boston Crab and stuff like that. So, <laughs> uh, I was just amazed that not only her ability to give such a great performance, um, you know, there's such a variety of great scenes, and then also to be able to deliver the way she did physically with people that were really wrestlers was just really impressive to watch. You know, and Stephen, for you, you have a number of WWE wrestlers who appear in this, in, you know, in, including at one point in his career, of course, Dwayne Johnson. How was that incorporating that into the film for you? And, and did you worry that you could go kind of too far into it and lose track of the story? Well, uh, I worked, you know, very close collaboration with our producer, Kevin, here, um, it, both in kind of getting the, the, the sort of ingratiating ourselves with the WWE because we needed to bring them in because they sort of own Paige's, you know, sort of story in some regards. And... Um, and so it was important to me that it made sense for the wrestling fan and the WWE fan and, the, and it felt authentic and that we were sort of respectful of, of what they love. But as someone who's never followed wrestling and not had any understanding of it, I had to sort of get up to speed. But I wanted to make sure that it didn't, you didn't need to enjoy wrestling to enjoy it. But there is, nevertheless, a lot you need to understand, which I need to explain in the movie, in order for you yeah. as a non-wrestling fan to kind of appreciate well, and that, her and, journey. And, and that's what I find very interesting, and Paige mentioned that briefly too, is there is a whole process, and you get to see the process of how these people, it's, it's a real behind the curtain process to it. Um, in telling that story, was there elements that, and was it for time or other reasons that you left out, or things that you just wanted to kind of get through quicker? Well, it's a 90-minute movie, and there's a yeah. lot, a great deal that's uh, both in, in her real life story, but also in terms of the the sort of, I mean, in in reality, her story I think probably spreads over what would you say from when you went to when you won the title? Is it three or four years? Uh, just in WWE. When you, you went from when you arrived in America to. Oh when you... yeah, yeah, two and a half years. Mm -hmm. Right, so two yeah. and a half years is a lot to try and. And I just think, I don't like movies where it just says, six months later, yeah. oh, you know, it's terrible. just like, oh, okay. And, um, and so we just wanted to sort of feel like, because to me, the way she described it to me is it just felt relentless. It felt like you're on this treadmill, mm -hmm. just learning and, and having to prove yourselves to the paymasters, to the fans. And so I just wanted to get that sense that she, it's, she, that it's sort of relentless, you know? It's, and so we kind of compressed time a bit. Vince is a sort of conflation of a number of the different trainers that she had, because again, you know, I can't feature the, four or five different trainers that she had, you know. Um, and and so, yeah, you do have to make certain kind of choices, but I think we try to remain true to the shape of the story and the, and, the, and the sort of highlights of the narrative, if you like. Paige, for you, you know, WWE Studios has become a massive arm of, 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 the, of the company in the past several years. For you, how do you think this will change the perspective that your fans who see you in the ring now see, will see you? Well, they get to see like a behind the scenes look on, on how my life is, obviously, and the struggle that it took for me to get to this point. And um, they'll they'll walk away from this, and I feel like they'll be very inspired, not just because it's uh, my story. It's, it's just a very inspiring and empowering story. It's just uh, it's a really beautiful underdog movie. And we like to, well, I, I personally like to um, compare it to Rocky, you know, like, like we say, you don't have to be a wrestling fan to like, uh, this movie, you don't have to be a boxing fan to like Rocky, but it's such a beautiful family oriented um, underdog story, and I feel like people are going to really, really love this. Kevin, um, and, and have, it's really good. It is, no, it is. It's really good. It's really, really good. Um, Kevin, Stephen talked about it a little bit earlier, and I wanted to get a sense of it just from the business point of view. How do you manage those marriages between Film 4 and WWE, and kind of, you know, making sure this film gets all the, that it hits all the right marks? I think when I first saw that, when Dwayne, after Dwayne saw the documentary at late night in, in London, he, and he and I um, talked, and we talked about what to do with the movie. What struck me about the movie was when I was, a, when I was an executive at Universal, it reminded me the same time I saw Billy Elliot the first time. Oh, that's interesting. And the level of authenticity that it approached that story, and the fact that I'm not interested in ballet very much, mm -hmm. but that story made me interested in that boy and that family's interest in ballet. And so what was interesting to me about this movie is I cared very much about what these people cared about. And what Stephen and I talked about and what Dwayne and I talked about was that, ironically, the two, thing, the two halves of that equation, both Film 4 and the WWE, were served by starting a development with Film 4. Mm -hmm. Because the film was about this family. Mm -hmm. 
And so starting in England, in London, where the story is set, set in Norwich, but mm -hmm. in England, was very important. Ironically, when you developed, took time to develop the story and you did it with a level of authenticity and reality and affection for these people, you were able to then, with Dwayne, go to the WWE and say, look, this is a story about a very famous character, a very famous person in your employ who we have treated with great dignity. Mm -hmm. And so what happened was they, were, they too were very keen to be involved in it and support it because you know, getting, in, getting involved with the WWE, the NFL, Major League Baseball, all of those are very, very tricky organizations. So I think I the way- I you use the word tricky. Like well, they're different. well they, they, have a, they have a massive fan base and yeah. they don't want to enter into a different media space and jeopardize their basic business, right? And so the fact that Dwayne Johnson was a, a producer and involved in the movie with his Seven Bucks company was very important to them, of course. And I think ultimately what Steven Script was able, to, was able to speak to in a way that just the documentary alone was not able to speak to was, and again, with the, with the people at Film 4 and their help and development, we were able to then go to the WWE and say, we're doing you right. And that was what was really important about the, the order that we went in. Now, I know a number of you guys have been to, to, to Sundance before. And Stephen, I want to get a sense from you. Is this, this was the, you know, Deadline broke the story earlier this, this month about this was the secret screening. Um, what does it mean to you to debut a film at Sundance? I've, I, you know, my first love was movies, and that was the thing that I grew up loving and studying and becoming kind of a fan and a historian of before I ever started making anything. In fact, one of the things, one of the reasons I'm here, one of the reasons I make movies or TV is because of Vincent Swingers. I used to do film reviewing about the age Dude, of one 20. One of the reasons most people do a lot of things is because of Vincent well, Swingers? indeed, indeed. <laughs> but I, I, um, I used to do film reviewing, and, and they used to send me, no disrespect, but they, because I was a very junior, they used to send me to the films no one had heard of. And, uh, and, the, and the more senior critics would see the kind of high-profile stuff, and they sent me to see Swingers, and, uh, and I was watching it, and I was just so blown away. And I felt, it was the first time I'd seen a movie where I felt oh, I could do this, because I felt like this was people I knew, and it felt like they had kind of, they were a gang, and that they had sort of scrabbled to make this together, and, and it felt uh, real and authentic, and just, it felt like it was born of their lives, and it wasn't full of, you know, dinosaurs or anything crazy, it was just, uh, I mean, maybe you had some in the early scripts, I don't know, <laughs> but, um, but I just felt, and, and I honestly remember finishing seeing that movie, and remember thinking, I can't write about movies anymore, I feel like I need to make them, I need to be on the other side of the camera, and so, so that idea of sort of the independent spirit and the kind of guerrilla e spirit was certainly something we did when we made The Office originally. You know, it was just me and Ricky kind of doing it ourselves and the BBC barely even noticing. We're like in a back room. And so even here, it's like to, to finally come to Sundance. I've never been before. I always wanted to come when I had a movie to bring. And even though we have Dwayne Johnson, who by many metrics is this, you know, the biggest movie star in the world, it still for us feels like a very low budget independent movie it was born out of you know film four it was born out of you know we we, we worked fast and we worked kind of guerrilla style on much of it and so it feels you know like it sort of inhabits the spirit of this festival um and i'm very pleased to be here vince it, Stephen brings up an interesting point i mean swingers was one of those seminal indie 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 films for you looking back on your own career which which was turned down by sundance by the way yeah <laughs> 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 which was which was I was going to make a point to. Now where you are in your career and all the you make being at Sundance at this point in your career, what is it like to have a Sundance debut for you? Well, you know, it's fun to work in the way that we worked on this movie. Someone like Stephen, like I think the challenge of the movie, what I was really amazed at what he pulled off was you're dealing with a character movie that you're rooting for, so it is that movie. It is kind of more independent, but you're then making a spectacle out of. Um, something that is a sport and also entertainment. So it's not like Rocky where there's a decision after the fight. So, so much of it is, these guys all do such a great job. As a family, you really fall in love with them in not an obvious way early on. And so for me, I felt like I was doing an independent film and the way that he worked was that. And then you'll see when you see the movie, there's a tie into something, a world that's much greater. But it's always fun to be a part of a project where someone cares about it, they're thoughtful, they're including with ideas. Um, it's, uh, it's always the best way to work. Jack, your character, you, you play Paige's brother in, in the film. Your character has, without trying to give it any away, struggles. Uh, and trying to find himself and his own identity in the shadow of his family, much in the way Paige does. For you, as an actor, what was that process like? Um, I mean, it was it was a lot of fun, you know, with the wrestling. Just as uh, just hearing about a film about a family of wrestlers from Norwich, just that as a tagline, I just instantly wanted to do it, and I sent a tape to to Stephen. Um, 
so that alone was exciting. But then getting to explore the side of Zach, that, um, w which is, I, I, I've been lucky enough in a few roles now to play, to, to explore that side of um, insecurity that, that, that comes with being either in the spotlight or having an enormous responsibility on you in one way or another. And particularly as a man as well, it's quite, um, it's interesting that we're, we're getting to see more of that. And, and also someone that has, I've said before, that has a slight self-destruct button and likes to hover his finger over it quite a lot is, is really interesting to me and a lot more human and a lot more than just playing a wrestler. So to get to do that was amazing and to really push at how hard I could go with how much it affected him. And I didn't spend too much time talking to Zach about how much it affected him. A lot of it was there in the writing. And there's, there's one particular scene where he makes a, I mean, it's not giving anything away, but we, we know he doesn't make it, but he makes a, a, a sort of last ditch attempt to get in and he rings someone up at the WWE. And, and um, it's kind of like, I've never done it, but I imagine loads have or wish they had is, you know, auditioning for a part in a film and, and not getting it and then phoning, you know, the sort of CEO of a massive, you know, uh, studio and saying, look, I can do this. And it's just, it's such a really, it was such a beautifully written scene and really tragic. Um, so to have that element along with the ridiculous fun of being thrown at Nick Frost, you know, <laughs> it, it, was, it was a dream job, really, seriously. Being thrown at Nick Frost is a dream job. Yes, yeah, yeah. In, in, in any in, context. In can gold I say light crap. catching Jack yeah. Loudon in light yeah. was a dream. You have to have <laughs> the right outfit, I guess, for it. Exactly. We're going to take some questions from you guys in a few moments. But before we do, and when you ask a question, ask a question. And ask a question about this movie. And please, let's not make a statement. <laughs> Questions are usually one sentence with a question mark at the end. And if you could say who it's for, because we have a lot of people on stage. Lena, before we go to the audience, you know, what is it like for you... Obviously, you've done a lot of different roles over the years. What is it like for you basing a role on someone who is still alive, who's here in the world, knowing that they're going to see what you've done? Uh, terrifying. Um, I mean, the family's so adorable and bonkers. I just, you know, I just want Paige's mom to be happy. I haven't met her yet, so that's, you know, we'll have a face-to-face -face <laughs> at some point. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of pressure. Was that, a de was that a decision not to meet her? You just wanted to... I watched, obviously, the documentary, and then there's lots of footage of Julia being interviewed about different moments in her life. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, I think it's easier not to meet the person for me. Nick, is that true for you? When you um, yeah, I think I didn't want to do an impression of Ricky. I just wanted to kind of feel like how Ricky felt as a father and having to provide rather than trying to just do an impression. Do you, I and mean, that's really interesting because some, sometimes when I talk to people who played real life people, they really do spend a lot of time together. And obviously there are people, and there, you wonder about like, well, how will they play me? Has that, do you, do you, do you see that in people sometimes? I do you see them just, they're, you're just doing a mimic version of that. I guy. think those people probably wouldn't have had to have taken a train to Norwich, <laughs> um, which was a big decision for me because <laughs> there wasn't a unit car. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, every actor has a different way of doing it, and there's no wrong answer, right? There probably is a wrong answer somewhere, but that's not going to be the one today. Okay. Um, do we have any questions from the audience? Well, sir, you have one down the front here. Who's it for? Uh, for Nick, but I just want to pick it up back off of what you said, Stephen. That's not a question. Sorry, that's a I statement. Sorry. Let the man speak. <laughs> how did it feel to hang up on the world's biggest actor? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, good. It was amazing. It's probably the high point of my career. Um, uh, and not just my career, me as a person. Uh, thank you. Spoiler alert. <laughs> what? Spoiler alert. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Stephen kind of did. Actually, but to, to that, Stephen, um, you know, one of the interesting things about is Dwayne has multiple roles in this film. He's in the film, yes. and he's a producer in the film. Um, you talked a little bit about the collaboration you had with him. So how was that in terms of dealing with him on the other side of the camera? You mean as an actor? Yeah. Well, he, uh, you, there's a scene, again, I don't want to give anything away, but there's a scene where he, he interacts with Paige backstage at WrestleMania, which happened for real. And you'll see it in the movie, and you're like, we, you definitely made that up for the movie. We didn't. That was one yeah. of the first things she told me uh, she'd experienced. Is that, is that really, is that like a, almost 100%? Because it yeah. seems so like, that's bullshit. No way right. it happened like that. Especially no. with the, like, well, I'm going to, you know. Well, blah, blah. I, he, he, uh, I actually got a text on my phone, and it was just like, hey, it's DJ. 
uh, I would love to see you about something if, if you have time today during WrestleMania. And I was just like, who's DJ? <laughs> I was so confused. And I was sitting next to Dima like, oh, and I was like, who's DJ? And he was just like, it's Dwayne Johnson, you idiot. You know, and I'm like, oh my God. I was like having an anxiety attack. Then I get taken to like, uh, to like where his office is, where all the crew and stuff are. And, and he was just like, yeah, I watched your documentary, fantastic. You know, and then it went into the whole story of that. But yeah, it was very, very accurate. And um, <laughs> oh, oh, mic drop, <laughs> <Yeah>. boom. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so we, so Dwayne plays himself in the movie, and we we went to a number of different actors first, you know, and and in the end we just we just thought he was most convincing as The Rock. Um, <laughs> and you didn't have to do any prosthetics, there was or, no prosthetic or training, work. or like anything like he, that. He he did a lot of his own tattooing. Yeah. Um, and uh, so no time, in the, no time wasted in the chair. Almost yeah. no time in the makeup oh, right. chair. So great. And um, and That's he's indie film at its best. There you go. Yeah. But what great thing about him is he's he's just he's very you know everyone famously says about how nice he is to work with and he's just a gentleman he he he's just once he's there on the set he just gives you his all um, there's a moment where he has to do his you know be at his most the rock you know and and, and kind rockiest. of is at his rockiest and kind of do it what they call promos you know where you shout and holler and um, and I'd written a kind of slightly bad pastiche of that and then he went away and kind of. 20 minutes later, came back and, and just had full-on rock and just took it and made it way better and um, and just and just comes on and just does it and just does you know like a like a two-minute monologue at full pelt with no rehearsal and uh, and then it's like thanks very much see you later <laughs> I mean it's he, he's extraordinary uh, Florence I just wanted to ask you before we go another question Don you mentioned in preparation for this you went and did real wrestling. Yeah, it's a wrestling film. No, but but I mean, but did you, I, I just want, but I, I want to be clear about something is like sometimes when people do films, they'll like you know the Robert De Niro's and types of the world will say like, oh yeah, I went and drove a taxi. No, 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 I know, I know. Yeah. Well, um, the the best. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Oh. <laughs> no, but it is. I that that was one of the main reasons why I fell in love with this film and the documentary in the script, which was that obviously we're doing a wrestling film and we are expected to wrestle, and that is so much fun. As actors, you don't usually get to do your own stunts, and that was the first thing that. Ooh. My phone rang. Oh, that's that's a shame. Uh. That's a shame. <laughs> oh dear. Who was it? Uh. Who was it? <laughs> it was DJ sending me a text saying, "Come to my office later." Oh. <laughs> It's a wrestling film, moron. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, uh, we, we definitely, we wrestled. We had to wrestle. I was playing a, a WWE superstar. Um, so if I hadn't, I think that would have been absolutely awful. Um, but Jack and I went over to NXT in Florida, mm -hmm. which is where all the pro wrestlers just learn and train and work out together. And we, we had a couple of weeks there. And then we also had some really intense CrossFit sessions and uh, training sessions back back in UK. So by the time we started, we, um, we, we had to be a little bit in the know. Was there anything, uh, for either of you, was there anything unexpected out of that training besides it being so hard? Uh, rope climbing. Rope climbing? Yeah, during the CrossFit stuff, like, like where the, the trainer was screaming at me to go up for the 15th time. And I really thought, is this going to be worth it? Does the film need me to get to the top? But I did anyway, and I think it pays off, you know. It totally shows on screen. Yeah, yeah. I saw totally it. I saw screen. it in your yeah. muscles and yeah, scenes. Yeah, yeah. He climbs Do we have an, we, there's, a, there's a lady here by the monitor. Hi. Who's your question Mike, Do you want for? a microphone? My question's for Stephen. I was just wondering, um, you know, the, with the show Glow on Netflix and the interest in wrestling, and particular female wrestling, I was wondering if you were inspired by that at all, the popularity of it, if there was anything, if you found any connection between the two or well um, funnily enough um <clears throat> th you know this tells you a lot about how long it takes to make a film and get a film made even when you have dwayne johnson involved is that by we began i this think we're just gonna call him dj now dj yeah just dj um we're all on dj he here. lets me call him mr johnson um <laughs> and uh, i personally never call a man mr <laughs> johnson <laughs> <laughs> um and uh, he, but, but, but in the time that it took us to kind of start the movie and get it financed and get it made, Glow was announced, was made and was aired. <laughs> and so, um, so we, I wasn't aware of that when, when we began the project. So that kind of came along. And I uh, deliberately didn't watch it because I didn't want to be in, influenced by it. It's very but, good. But, well, I'm sure. I don't doubt it. But um, no, I mean that sincerely. But, um, but uh, It's so, award-winningly good, actually. <laughs> let's stop talking about Glow. Um, but... Uh, but, 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 but certainly because I was never really aware of wrestling before, suddenly, you know, you become hyper aware of this thing. And then suddenly you start seeing that there's a lot of articles you suddenly realize written about, you know, Trump's White House being like, you know, or, or Trump using the kind Trump, of Trump, stylistic techniques of... Trump, I mean, Trump, well, A, one of the people involved with WWE is now a cabinet secretary. Right. And he was actually in it 
Well, I cut that clip of him from WrestleMania into the you movie had him for in the a movie? while. I had that in the movie in, for a while, but um, it turns out that you have to actually get permission from Trump to use that clip. And so we had to contact the White House to try and get him to sign off. You didn't have DJ send a text? I don't know that no. DJ's that close with Trump. Maybe, I don't know, I should have done. Um, and so unsurprisingly, Trump didn't get back to me. Um, uh, not yet. I could, maybe I'll get a letter once the movie's maybe come Maybe it'll out. be added for the post Sundance uh, uh, cut, exactly. Right, exactly. Do we have more questions? Yes. You mentioned it took a while as well as many. How long did it take for you from the script to have it made? Kevin, you can speak and to that more. How many days was the shoot? How many days shoot? Well, like 35. No, I mean from when we started the whole thing to get. Well, from when Stephen. Yes. When, 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 when was the, the documentary about you was like 2012, 2013? Uh, it was actually a little bit earlier than that. I think it was like 2011 it yeah. aired because I came to WWE in 2012. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. One of the testaments to Steven's script is that from the moment that he wrote the script to when we put the movie together and were able to assemble all the actors and got the financing in place, that was extraordinarily quick because people really sort of fell in line around the screenplay. But, but the, and that's sort of an accelerant, right? Because that's yeah. the hardest thing to do, I think, yeah. when you try and get a screenplay and try and get the actors that you need to do it. Um, but in terms of the, the full life cycle, I think it was about five, six years from when the documentary aired to now, something like that. Stephen, how long did you guys, how long shooting days? What did we do? I think I, about, um, <laughs> uh, two, two, about two months, I think, we had of shooting. Was that something like, was that right? Something we, had, we shot in Los Angeles for the, all of the WWE material, and then all the, all the, we shot in London for all the, in London and Norwich. Our, the Norwich. Our so you actually did have to go to Norwich. We went to Norwich, and our yeah. fourth day of filming was in, it was in the Staples Center in front of 20,000 fans. Dwayne, DJ, Mr. Johnson came down. <laughs> he emceed the event, and we only had one hour. The WWE gave us one hour after a match to uh, to sort of shoot in the ring with Florence. So Florence had to go out and recreate a match that Paige once did. Um, and, uh, and and Dwayne gets in the ring, and I said, "We've only got an hour, DJ. Uh, please don't get carried away." And he went out there. Must have done 20 minutes on the mic, just talking to the fans. And I'm the only person I think who's ever shouted to Dwayne Johnson, "Get the hell out of the ring!" <laughs> and um, and we so we ended up with about 45 minutes of of, of Florence having to go out there. And what was that like? What was match. that like, Florence? Uh, crazy. It was the, one of the biggest scenes I've ever done, let alone in the film. And we shot it on the fourth day of shoot in the Staples Center. And I did uh, one of the most famous matches, age 21. Um, and I'm not a wrestler. So it was <laughs> mental, amazing, exhilarating. Um, but I will say, I even though I appreciated the wrestling community in the world um, when I came on board to the job, I never quite understood why all these athletes go out there and and because it hurts it hurts a lot and you you do take bumps and you do break bones and you do wind up at the end of your career a little bit broken and and i had never quite understood why you kept on getting back in but i will say that for the eight minutes of every time we did the fight i felt completely uh, superhuman and nothing hurt and i it was like flying for eight minutes. Well, there's, a, there's a very good line that, that Lena says, I think almost like right at the beginning of the film, that tries to convince your character what, what it's like to get in the ring. Um, and there's a, a cocktail is mentioned of, 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 of uh, stimulants. Yeah. Yeah. And was it like that? <laughs> It was mesmerizing. You have people screaming at you because they hate you and people screaming at you because they love you and people screaming at you because you're Paige, but I'm not Paige. Um, and uh, you're doing all these amazing moves and getting cheered for it. I, I've, there, there will be nothing that comes close to that, I'm pretty sure, for the rest of my life. So I completely take my hat off to them. Paige, for you, having done this for years now, is it still like that? Yeah, I mean, I don't do the wrestling side of things anymore. Wrestling kind of took its toll on me a little bit. Um, but... I don't even know what the question was. <laughs> what, what, was it still, like, in your career, like, from the first time you got that reaction from the audience? To, yeah. To the, was it still that much of a thrill? Oh, yeah, always. The, I, I had someone say to me before, it was uh, um, Drew, Drew McDonald, the one who got me my first tryout um, with WWE in the first place, rest in peace. But he said to me, uh, as soon as your butterflies go, that's when you should quit. So, but my butterflies are always there. So. We have time for one more question. Do we have anyone? I can't, is there anyone here at the back? Well, then we're going to wrap this baby up. You guys, your film's premiering tonight. Um, yes. it, I hope it goes great. Fighting with the family. Thank, Thank you very you much. So Thank you very everyone. much. Thank you.